Hello guys, welcome back to another video videos. In today's video, we'll be talking about Argo City, the hot topic in the IT industry, right? By the way, before I actually start talking about Argo City, we'll be giving you a recap. So what we have done in our past videos is basically we try to create a Kubernetes cluster using Minikube, right? And then we try to deploy an application and in the other videos we try to show you the differences between the cluster IP, node port, and balancer service type. So this is what we have done so far until this video. In today's video, I'm gonna be actually using Minikube cluster as well. I'm gonna unpause my Minikube cluster. In today's video, I plan to actually go through Argo City. So we are going to install Argo City in our Minikube Kubernetes cluster. And after that, we're gonna basically walk you through with the UI. After that, we're gonna try to deploy an application using Argo City. This video is going to be very brief. So I'm not gonna go very, very detailed about Argo City, right? Because that's not the purpose. In today's video, trying to show you what could you actually do using Argo City, okay? So without the further ado, let's get started. Hey, by the way, if you are new to my channel, do not forget to hit the subscribe button, guys, because that's how you can support me. All right, so no more talk. Let's jump into the actual business. So we talked about recap, and now we're gonna talk about Argo City. So if someone is asking question, like what is actually Argo City? Argo City nothing, but a declared GitOps tool by which you can do continuous deployment of your application to your Kubernetes cluster. So can I not actually use something else? Yes, you can. Actually, you can write some YAML. For example, you're talking about GitHub Actions or GitLab pipelines, right? You could actually do so writing even some bash script. But this declarative GitOps tool makes your life a little bit more easier, right? If you have the nice UI, you can see what is happening within your cluster. If the changes you have made in your GitLab repository is actually being deployed to your Kubernetes cluster or not, right? So Argo City, basically a declarative GitOps tool to continuously deploy your application to Kubernetes cluster. So that's what this Argo City is, right? And now I'm not gonna go into details because you're gonna learn it slowly as we go along with this video, okay? So now you might ask like, hey man, what is GitOps? So this is the term you might be hearing a lot in, in like in different discussion with your teams, like in online forums and things like that. So GitOps basically, let's break it down, something like this. So Git is basically, used to version control your application code base. Let's say you are orchestrating some infrastructure in public cloud, right? And you have written some Terraform. So this is basically version control using Git. And after that, you have some pipeline. Using that pipeline, you basically deploy your infrastructure changes, right? In your dev cluster or in your production cluster, this is what basically GitOps. GitOps basically let you version control your infrastructure code base. And after that, you can basically deploy those infrastructure changes to your actual environment, right? So this is what actually GitHub, GitOps does. So I guess you get the concept clear now. Okay. So let's look into the namespaces. So I'm gonna go shortcut. And these are the namespaces currently we have in our cluster. And if we look into kubectl get nodes, we have got two nodes. One of them is basically the master node and the other one is basically the worker node. And at this point, what we have, let me show it to you. We have this, we have load balancer type service, which is called demo. What I'm gonna do today is basically going to convert or let's say I'm gonna delete this one so we don't have to talk about the old stuff anymore. So kubectl delete, and what we want to delete is basically the service, and service is called demo. We don't need the namespace at this point because this was already in the default namespace, so we can just delete it, right? And we have got two in here, 
and they are running for a few days, right? Okay, so this is the status of our Kubernetes cluster at this point. So what we want to do in the next phase, we want to basically do this part. So install Argo City within the Minikube cluster. So we're gonna create a namespace and we're gonna call it Argo City. The reason actually we are creating the namespace is because if you're not familiar with the concept of namespace, it's basically to keep your Kubernetes resources isolated. Meaning that let's say the Argo City resources is going to be bind to or going to be put into Argo City namespace, right? So this is something is very important is because if you want to, let's say, control the granular level of access to your Kubernetes cluster, the namespace is the thing, right? For example, if X employees wants to have access to your Argo City, you can give him access to this one. If someone else actually have want to have access to default namespace, you can actually give them. So basically what you can do, you can do RBAC, meaning that role-based access control using namespace, right? So this is very handy. And let's create this. So now we created the namespace. So if you see, this namespace is already created and right now we do not have anything at this point. So next, what we want to do, we want to actually install Argo City, right? Within our Kubernetes cluster. And here I'm going to be taking you to the documentation. So this is the command. Let me show it to you. This is the command I'm going to be actually running. Let me take here. And let me explain to you. So what we're gonna do right now, we are going to install Argo CD in this namespace. This is why we have the N and means namespace. And look at this, this is the stable, basically the stable version of Argo CD, right? And install.yaml, this is very important to understand. There are like two different types. I'm gonna show it to you. One is called core install, and the other one is basically install.yaml. So if you install this one, you get all the features of Argo CD. So which basically includes the UI, SSO, login, and the multi-cluster, basically the multi-cluster features. But if you say core install, then it's gonna install only the core components of Argo City, so you are not going to get the feature of this, right? So that's the difference. So let me take you to this page, this URL, and here you can see install.yaml. This is what we are going to be installing in our Kubernetes cluster, and here you can see core.install. So if you do not want install.yaml, you can see this is the one you can actually do this one. So this one is going to include only the core component of Argo City, okay? So I will also paste the link in the video description so you do not have to worry at this point, okay? So let's get back to the CLI. So what we're gonna do, we are going to be running this command and this command is going to install Argo City. And you can see bunches of things, actually it has created deployments, Redis, deck server, server. You can see a lot of the things actually being created. And now if you go and check this, get, let me go, get pods. You can see in the default namespace, we have got only this, but if I actually change a bit to Argo City namespace, in the default one, you do not have to mention the namespace by default. It's going to show you what the resources are actually part of default namespace. But if you want to see the resources from other namespaces, then you need to mention the namespace like, like so. So N means namespace, is the short form of namespace. So now if I run here, you can see it has a controller, it has a DAX server, it has notification, Redis, repo server, server. Quite a lot of things actually being created. So now if I'm going here, and I jump right here and I say as we see, you can see a quite a lot of the things actually been created. And right here you can see everything is created with the type of cluster IP, right? And if I'm going here, let's say deployments, and this time if I run here we can see our demo application, but what happens if I want to see what is actually installed? part of the deployment and you can see there are like quite a lot of things. So this is how actually you can see 
what resources are actually created. Part of this install.yml because this is something I have not written, right? I just wanted to show it to you because there are bunches of things bundled together with this manifest file, okay? The CRDS, right? So now what we have done is basically install the Argo CD within the Minikube cluster. So the next, what we want to do is this. We want to expose the service using a load balancer. So this is the thing we want to do right now. And let me go back to this. And here, what I'm going to do is basically run this, run this particular command. And this time we are going to, every time you do, remember to include the namespace, right? And the service we are talking about, Argo City Server, and the type is going to be load balancer. In my previous sessions, so basically these videos where I talked about the, the load balancer, how to actually convert it using the patch command, but I did not talk about this particular namespace because our service was running under default namespace. But if your service running other than default namespace, you need to actually include the namespace. Otherwise, if you create it, it's going to fall into default namespace. So now if I go back and say get SVC, and if I do this, you can see this particular one actually is changed to load balancer type. Just a while ago, we have seen the service was running actually under cluster IP. Now this is running under load balancer because here we particularly say this particular service, right? And this should be switched to load balancer type. And here you can see the port number. Here you can see the port number. So this is the node port one basically. And this is the, this is the port where it should be, actually the service should be listening to. But this is the node port one. So trying to get access to the service from the Kubernetes cluster internal IP, this is the one you're gonna use. Uh, internal IP colon this particular port number. Excellent, so we basically now expose to the service using the load balancer. The next, what we're gonna do, we are going to expose the service, right?